In this video, we're going to cover the two ways that a partnership can record the introduction of a new partner. So the idea is we have an existing partnership. Someone just got elected to join the partnership. Usually that person makes a contribution of assets because when you make partner, they are saying that you get to be one of the owners. Well, they don't just give you part of the business. They give you the opportunity to purchase part of the business. For this topic, we're going to learn two different ways to record the person's contribution and set up their new capital account for the new partner. Here's a problem that will give us some facts we can work with. The capital balances and profits and loss sharing percentages of the Sprint, Jog, and Run partnership are as follows. So here's the setup. We've got an existing partnership. It currently has three partners. They do not share profits and losses equally. And each partner, as we would expect, has his or her own capital balance. Well, it's an exciting time at the partnership. They have agreed to admit Walk into the partnership. He will be joining the first day of 2016 for a 20% interest in the capital of and income of the business. So we don't really care about the income part. We care about the capital interest. So Walk will be buying a 20% interest in the partnership's net assets. Requirement A, prepare the entry, so they want a journal entry, to record Walk's admission to the partnership, assuming that he invested $100,000 in the partnership to get this 20% interest. The partners want you to use the bonus method. So as we've seen before, there's a bonus method and a goodwill method. So let's do the bonus method first, and then later in the video, we will look at the goodwill method. So instead of just going right to the journal entry, why don't we look at a partnership's balance sheet and try to figure out what's going on. So the first thing I need to do is fill in everything I know from the problem, which is I know the three existing partners' capital balances. So I've got those filled in. I have a spot for walk. Don't have a capital balance yet for walk. So before walk comes in, if I assume there's no liabilities, then I know what the assets are. They have to equal the partner's current equity balances totaled up, which I can see on Excel is 480. So I'll set that up as miscellaneous assets. I don't really care what the assets are. If they're buildings, equipment, land, doesn't matter. I just need a number there. So now the balance sheet is in balance and new partner walk is coming in. So partner walk invest $100,000 into the business. So that's an important to pay attention to the language, right? The money is going into the partnership, so it needs to become part of the partnership's balance sheet. He's investing cash, that's an asset, so I'm going to add it to the partnership's assets, raising them from 480 to 580. So at this point, you'd be tempted to say, oh, well, then Walk's going to start with a capital balance of 100,000, and that would be a very easy approach. Paid 100, start with 100. The problem is we have another criteria we have to satisfy, which is that Walk's capital balance has to start equal to 20% of the partnership's assets. Well, including Walk's contribution, the partnership assets are 580. What's 20% of that? So 580 times 0.2. That is 116,000. So let's figure out how much of the bonus each partner is responsible for. Sprint, 30%. The bonus again is 16, so Sprint has to cover 30% of that. So Sprint's capital account needs to be reduced by 4,800. And you can do the same for the other two partners jog and run. So I need to reduce Sprint's capital account by 4,800. How will I do that? I'll do it on the debit side. Jog's account needs to go down by 8,000, runs by 3,200. So the first part of the journal entry is to debit cash, right? We're doing the accounting for the partnership. The partnership received $100,000 of cash, so debit cash. We figured out that Walker's capital account needs to start at 116. So make a credit to Walker for 116. 
You can see that doesn't balance, and we can see that we need debits now of 16,000 to get this to balance. And the debits we need are going to be debits to the original three partners' capital accounts for the amounts we already figured out. So Sprint's got to take 30% of this $16,000 difference. And that is the entry to bring in Partner Walk on January 1st, 2016. Walk got a bonus, and that bonus came from the other partners. It won't always be that way. The bonus could go the other direction. You might need credits to make the journal entry balance. And if that's the case, you move Sprint, Jog, and Run over into the credit column. You use them to make your journal entry balance. Once you get the cash and the new partner's account set up, you just use the other three partners to either increase or decrease accounts so that the journal entry balances. Let's move to part B and see how that changes the question. Part B, prepare the journal entries to record Walk's admission to the partnership, assuming that he invests $140,000 in the partnership, so the money is going to go onto the partnership's balance sheet, still is going to be a 20% partner, so his capital account has to represent 20% of the partnership's assets. The partnership wants you to use the goodwill method. So what they're telling you is nobody's getting a bonus that we need to get the assets right so that when Watt comes in for $140,000, he's getting a 20% interest. The question wants us to prepare journal entries, but let's try to figure it out from the balance sheet what needs to happen. So this is the balance sheet before Watt comes in. Walk's going to put $140,000 in. So I'm going to add that to miscellaneous. So 480 plus 140. So that would raise the assets up to 620,000. Now Walk is putting in 140 and nobody's getting a bonus. He's not receiving a bonus. He's not paying a bonus. So his capital account should start at 140. So the balance sheet is balanced, and you might think, that's great, that one's really easy. But we did not comply with the requirements. One of the requirements was that Walk's capital account equal 20% of the partnership's net assets. Well, let's take a look at that. The assets are 620. What's 20% of that? Partnership assets of 620 times 0 0.2 is 124. Yet we put 140 in Walk's account, suggesting that he got a bonus. But he would argue he did not get a bonus. He would say that your problem is your assets are wrong. You need to get those assets up. What amount should assets be so that 140 is 20% of assets? Well, 140 divided by 0 0.2. 140 divided by 0 0.2 is 700. So they're saying assets need to go up to 700. So this suggests total assets need to be 700. Well, you can see assets are quite short of 700. We need to put another 80,000 into assets. And this is called the goodwill method. So that's what we'll do. We will add 80,000 of goodwill. So you can see assets are now 700, but now we have the problem that on the partner's equity accounts, they only total 620. And that's because that 80,000 has to be added to partner's equity accounts, which raises another question. Whose accounts should be increased for that amount? In our book and all the problems that we do in this book, we will assume that when we add goodwill to the balance sheet, that's goodwill that was created by the existing partners, the partners who were already there before the new one came in. So we need to allocate 80,000 of goodwill to the partner's equity accounts. How do we do it? Do we just split it evenly? No. We use their profit and loss sharing ratios. So Sprint needs to get 30% of the goodwill, jog half, and run 20%. So over on the right, I figured out how much I need to add to each of the original partner's equity accounts so that collectively their accounts go up by 80,000, which would raise partner's equity by 80,000, making its total 700 as well. So Sprint already had 160. You're going to add 24. 
How do you increase a partner's equity account with a credit? 40,000 will be added to Jog's capital account, 16,000 to run. Now the question wanted us to do a journal entry, so let's write all this out as journal entries. So these are the two journal entries that would create those effects on the balance sheet. Notice to do the Goodwill method, it takes two entries. One to record the goodwill, which in a sense is getting the assets to be what we want them to be. Second one is bringing in the new partner with his contribution of 140. So it doesn't matter what order you write them in. So when Walk comes in, remember, he's not getting a bonus. He's not paying a bonus. So his account should start with whatever his contribution is. The amount of his contribution, we use that to figure out what total assets should be. And in this case, we needed to raise the assets by 80,000. We do that by putting goodwill on the financial statements and then crediting that goodwill to the three original partners according to their profit and loss sharing ratios. There are several problems like this in the book. I suggest you practice all of them. They're pretty short and you can get pretty fast and efficient at this.